this is an, another episode of my conversation with Antinatalist Outreach. I hope you guys enjoy it. We do have some topics to discuss. Um, we're just going to go off the cuff again and give our views on each topic. And hopefully you guys will get involved in the discussion um, in the comment section or on social media. So, yeah, let's go. Hi. Um, yeah, can you hear me okay? Um, yeah, it's not that loud, but that's okay. It's loud enough, I suppose, for the camera. Right, good. Um, so, we were going to talk about a few things. Overcoming perceived negativity of antinatalism. Yeah, I. you said that, um, well, I brought it up in my videos as well that, um, maybe people are not uh, accepting antinatalism or uh, or taking it seriously because we're so dark in so many ways. Yeah, yeah. Um, this is a problem that pops up again and again. And the truth is, most people don't want to look at negativity. They want to turn their head and they want to enjoy life. And that's understandable. Nobody likes to have unpleasant experiences, myself included. And indeed, before I fully embraced antinatalism, I was one of those people who liked to uh, avoid negativity, to run away from it, to, to not fully analyse it, to kind of try and ignore it, pat it down and uh, pretend everything was okay. Um, but, you know, this is one of the uncomfortable things that we have to try and overcome as antinatalists and also as, a human spe as the human species because the truth is, life is full of suffering. The world is a pretty shit place, very shit place. Death is inevitable. All the horrible things we've mentioned in our videos are bad. Um, so why run away from that, you know? I think a good analogy is going into the darkness um, might may be uncomfortable at first but when you acclimatise to it and you, you're able to see your eyes get used to the darkness you're, you're able to see what's really going on in the world so you're not fumbling around bumping into things you know you've got the night vision you can see what's going on uh, I just I think my right. That's where we're at as antinatalists. My idea behind this is because I noticed that in the English-speaking world, where, where antinatalism, n not only do we have like Discord and Reddit and and Facebook, but it's a very small minority of people that are drawn towards the message, and. Um, the child-free community is a bit big, but they are also on the negative side of sort of despising children and sort of being like, oh, I'm so happy and uh, without kids. But I was sort of thinking that um, maybe to... Because uh, we, we're trying to spread the message of antinatalism, and even though it's a negative value on life... I think that people, because we can reach out to more people and get not only more invo involvement in the movement, but um, we can sort of speak speak to more people if we, because there's not a lot of there's not a lot of uh, people. Even old fan and Mendham didn't get that many views. You know, they didn't. They even though Mandem has eleven thousand subscribers, n not a lot of people want to hear the the dark and aggressive um, approach to pointing out. Well, maybe we should stop calling. Maybe 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 we're maybe we're being guilty of bad PR here ourselves. Maybe we should stop calling it darkness and simply call it the truth. Um, Maybe, maybe we're being a bit, little bit soft in our approach. Maybe, maybe we should stop, um, stop uh, bending over for these people and say, no, this is the truth. It's, whether you think it's darkness or light, it's the truth. It doesn't really matter 
uh, which way you're coming to it um, and how it makes you feel it is simply the truth you know um, that's that's sometimes what I feel you know that well a lot of the times a lot of the times it seems like we don't value life and that but I think we do value life but unfortunately I, I value life because I believe humans are feeling, we feel, we have emotions, we're, we're sort of very caring, altruistic and kind, and there is an inherent good in much of humanity, but I don't feel that it's worth those poor people, those well-meaning people suffering, and that's what life brings, life brings suffering, and often times it's grotesque, horrific and unbearable, okay? And pointless. True. So why would you want people you love to suffer? That is true. I, 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 for me personally, antinatalism is not a negative um, viewpoint. It's an action. It's, it's, it's a philosophy of love and caring because you do not want uh, children to suffer. You do not want people to suffer. You don't want it people just, to die. I just want to say that it just seems like there's a huge optimism bias that people have. The fact, the fact that they think. Oh, if you got cancer, you can overcome it. Or if you get raped, it doesn't matter. It do really doesn't matter. They minimize it and they say, get over it, you grow from it. It, it. There's a lot of times that people consider the suffering, they minimize the suffering and say, well, you're going to grow from it. You're going to get stronger from it. You're going to have a much better life in the future. It's going to get so, it's going to be okay, you know. It doesn't matter that people suffer because they they will become stronger and compensate for that suffering and that's what I'm trying to tell people is that in many cases people actually commit suicide because of the suffering that they don't do not overcome and we do all we see is the lottery winners and we don't see all the losers that we don't hear their voices and a lot of times in antinatalism we're trying to point out that there's a lot of people life outlook, their personality, their mindset, and, you know, then that in turn affects the children they bring up, because they, the children grow up under this um, carer who is a bit fucked up in the head, okay? And children suss out eventually, you know? Parents keep, keep little secrets, dark secrets from children, but the truth usually outs, you know? And the children usually find out that mother is a neurotic uh, mess because of some suffering that she went through. Okay, yeah. Or that the father is some type of beast. And that, that, that truth usually fucks up the child in the long run. Okay? It, 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 it's just a continuous cycle of um, people needing therapy. Okay? True, uh, true. They but... Go to therapy, but They go to therapy, they try to make themselves feel a little better about all the shit they went through. And then they think, they think they're at a stage where, oh, I can plop a baby out into this world. And that child grows up, learns about how fucking neurotic its mother is. And then it probably needs therapy, goes to therapy, and the cycle continues. Yeah, uh, can I just say, there, there's actually a podcast I listen to about this. They're, they're all psychologists, and they've all been through their own... They're very honest about childhood trauma that they've had. And two of them are mothers, and two of them yeah. are child-free. And the two mothers are very honest. They say that they have a lot of trauma that they didn't deal with before they had kids. And they're sort of... Yeah. Like you said, neurotic towards their kids, and they're very honest. These psychologists, the podcast is called "Don't Go There," um, or "Let's Go There," or something. Or I'm not sure what it's called well, exactly, we should, but um, we should, we should make uh, well, we should provide a link to that podcast at the bottom of this um, this discussion. I'll find it. Yeah, okay, I'll find the link and I'll post the link and the the. And these mothers are psychologists, okay? They're very honest about childhood trauma. If you don't know about therapists and psychologists, they, they are all... Psychology is all about childhood trauma. Like, they are, they are huge on research about childhood trauma and how we carry that throughout our lives and it, and it sort of affects our yeah. adulthood. But, of course it does. Like, the scary thing is the unconscious effect of... Um the childhood trauma. You know, the psychologists say our personalities are, are formed very, very early indeed. Some say about seven years of age is when you're, you know, your, your personality is, by five, seven years of age, your personality has been formed. Some say younger. Um, but, um, but like you, you know, said, there, there, there's, there's too many... I know somebody, 
well, who, who, who's dead now, but they suffered, they were raped as a, as a young child, okay, by, by a, a few people, a few, a few disgusting assholes. Um, and that happened all before the age of seven, okay? So you can imagine that poor person's um, personality has been formed based on these fucking horrific experiences. You know, and that, that's terrifying. That's terrifying to think that that person has to go through life having experienced that, and that's become a core. It's, it's, it's very depressing. I'm sorry for everyone listening who's been through that. And man, I really, my heart goes out to you. Um, I, don't, I don't really want to talk about it, really, actually. Like, it's so horrific, isn't it? Right. That's okay. Um, yeah, uh, the. But, uh, the, the the next topic we wrote down, maybe because it's flowing into that, is this idea... Well, just one other thing, it's the, the theory of the lesser blow, you know, that's the other thing there. A lot of men do this, like they, they, they really struggle through life and they go through hardship and they think, I'm going to get somewhere, I'm going to make myself a fucking success, I'm going to hand down that success to my children, I'm going to give them a better life than I've had. Yeah. And that's, that's the hope, that's the fundamental hope of humanity, that's the little bit of light in the soul. And, it, and it's, a, it's a noble thing, but unfortunately it's fucking wrong. Okay, it's noble to want to, to, to do well and to do better for people, but unfortunately it's impossible. Um, how many, nearly every person who's decided to have a kid, if it hasn't been an accident, has probably done so because they uh, want their child to have a better life than them. Yeah, or well, they want their child to have as equally good a life as them if, if they're like a major success. And let's be honest, how many fucking times is that the case? How many times is that a case? Um, you know, maybe it's getting better in terms of superficially, like we're, we're, we're getting more access to technology and stuff, but psychologically, emotionally, uh, you know, is it, is, it, is it getting better for people? I, I, I question that. I question that. You know, people still get mentally illness, people still die, people still suffer, you know, from the boring futility of, of a lot of life. And I question if it's getting better at all, you know. It seems sometimes I think the more ignorant people in the past had it a little bit better because they weren't aware. They weren't aware of the futility. They had faith in, in, in their religions. They had, uh, they had also maybe... Uh, uh, Obviously, a misplaced you, respect in authority that they believe that authority was often a you, you know, them the right thing. Can I just now say, we age where people, can I? Atheist people don't have respect for authority. People question everything. Can, can I just say that exist, right? it, in the past, this is what I noticed and it affects me a lot is when I was younger, I really wanted to live on a farm, okay? I wanted to be self-sufficient. And there are people doing that right now. They are being self-sufficient. But at a lot of a lot of the population lives in urban areas. We're reliant on a lot of technology and a lot of um, businesses and um, stuff like that. We're not, we're not self-sustaining ourselves like in the past. You know, in the past we lived on farms, we were, we were helping each other, we worked together as a community to, um, I think, I think fly, fly, we were more self-sustaining. I think, I think you're being a little bit rose-tinted there about country living, you know. No, I'm not uh, being rose-tinted, I'm just saying, I'm just saying that compared to, compared to our situation now, how bad it is now, is the fact that we're not, we're not even in control of any of the like we're not self-sustaining you know we're not we're not doing anything f that is uh, we contribute to society and get money and that's how we eat okay but uh, at least we were involved in the in the process in the past and that's why i'm not being i'm not saying it was great and stuff i'm just saying that well right now it's not that great because we're not, no. we're not actually sustaining yeah. ourselves. To me, to me personally, it seems yeah, but there, there is the, there is the viewpoint, and I think this is potentially right. So well. the further you go from metropolitan urban environments, the further you go out into the sticks, uh, the more regressive uh, the philosophy of the people is, the more unwelcome people of difference are. Um, uh, you know.
know, it's, it, where, where do all the progressive uh, humanitarian, uh, you know, uh, movements start? They start in cities, okay? <laughs> Mostly it's people running away from the sticks, where people have been uh, oppressive, racist, homophobic, disabled, you know? Um, it starts in the city. So there are very positive things about living in cities as well. Um, but, you know, it's like anything, there's pros and cons to both aspects. But, Can we uh, go back to anti-natalism? Yeah, that, that, the, the fact that people think that they're going to create a copy of their loved one or the copy of their own fate and life and that the, the, the child that they're going to create is... They don't understand that you, you don't have that much control over that person's fate or... or you know that you're well, mortal. Yeah. Some you people die, and the kids become orphans. You know, so the, the, and you don't know well, like. And also, sorry. They might have character sorry. flaws. They might have multiple addictions. They might have bad attitude towards work and life, and they might not cope with with living, and and especially in an isolated world that we have now. Uh, uh. Well, you know, genetically, anyway, uh, given the current uh, situation, it's impossible to create a clone, uh, like a, when you breed of uh, a woman or vice versa, uh, your, your child is going to be uh, genetically different to you. And there's going to be mutations as well. Maybe those mutations might be positive, but they also could be negative. So it's a genetic fucking lottery, okay? And you're gambling. The natives are gambling with sentient life. They don't know what way that child's going to turn out. They don't know what problems it's going to have uh, psychologically, biologically. And they're willing to fucking just pop them out into this miserable world. And that child could develop brain cancer, have a fucking tumor the size of a fucking pumpkin grown out of its fucking brain. You know? Um, and when, when, when you, I've said this before, but when you say, I want to have a child, I want to have a baby. You are also, you, you are implicitly saying it's okay for a child to develop fucking cancer and die in agony because, you know, you know that that's a possibility. But if you don't fucking know, you're a stupid fucker and you shouldn't fucking have kids anyway. Yeah, but so, this is, this yeah. go, this ties into, because I see this a lot, that these people with sick children, they, they seem to think that their children are still lovable and even these people with, like, they have the ugliest children in the world, like, the headline is, you know, the ugliest child in the world. They, they seem to have this um, po positive bias, and even with procreation, they have a positive bias, and they don't understand that any form of brain damage or any form of mental disease can really destroy a person's adulthood as well as childhood. And you, not only do you, there's a lot of bullying in childhood and a lot of um, name calling and, and things like that. It's not just about cancer because cancer, well, it's not it's not really that prevalent amongst, even though it's a potential outcome, but people seem to think, oh, that's fine, you know, we're just going to love the child and the child's going to have fun in hospital for whatever. Yeah. Um, so it's not it's not just it's not just about the baby or the child, is it? Because as I've said before, the but if you think about born, if you think you about actual care. brain damage that causes a character flaw, because there are people that. They have accidents and they get a brain damage and they're completely different people and and even medication can cause a lot of character di differences and and there's there's actual real issues that can occur that is out of your control and people have this optimism bias that oh my kid's gonna become a doctor or my kid's gonna fucking be a pretty beautiful cute adoring loving healthy they think they're healthy people think they're so healthy that they have to have children i know i know and then, and then five years later they develop some fucking horrible fucking condition but um and that's the parents are talking about you know a lot, a lot of conditions don't hit you until midlife or you know uh later on in life so they don't even know what the fuck's gonna happen to them these parents but yeah um i uh, just we go back to overcoming the perceived negativity of of uh, antinatalism. Um, I think it's basically it depends on who you're talking to, doesn't it? Sometimes that, that you have to be robust and and really uh, you you meet fire with fire, don't you? Sometimes you have to you have to because you know um, if someone's being 
uh, aggressive towards you or shouting you down and calling you an idiot. Well, you have to act robustly back and show them harsh, cold facts. You know, there are other ways of doing it. You know, you can t t t to lighten the kind of um, effect of it, the, the, the harsh effect. You can use humour. You can be compassionate in how you do it. Um, also, I think it's easier to talk to people who haven't had kids yet uh, because it's. Uh, I think that's important. It's easier to talk to kids, people who haven't had kids, because they haven't got as much literal skin in the game. So, if you've had a kid, who the hell wants to admit publicly that they made a bad decision? You know? I, I've had a conversation. I've brought up antinatalism with a lot of my housemates, and. I wasn't able to convince anybody, and one of my housemates was an environmentalist, okay? And he's like, oh, I wanted to be an environmentalist so I can pass down the environment to my children's children's children. And it's like, you know that this is unsustainable and we're destroying the planet. I've got Echo. I've got Echo. Yeah, okay, I can hear you. I've got Echo coming. Alright, but I, I can hear you. Okay, so, um, yeah, uh, the, yeah, and then this other girl, she's South African, and she is sort of slightly feminist, but she also, I wasn't able to convince to not have children. So they didn't have children at the time, but they're not open to the idea. And this other guy I talked to, he seemed more open to it, uh, but he sort of said, why should we give up? Why should we give up on humanity and love? And because I said most people have children, they justify the suffering with love. And he said, "Why not?" So he said, "Why should we give up?" So these are the arguments we have to well, we have to this, confront. This, this is inconsequential. As an environmentalist, that person should have known that you know the environment is basically at the mercy of the cold and brutal nature of this world. And one, we're, we're no different to any other species. One day, humanity will become extinct on this planet, okay? Because it will become too hostile for us to continue living. Um, now, whether we manage to get our sentient life into a biscuit tin and fly it off a million light years to another planet, that's another thing. Some people even talk about going to another universe, like as in, you know, the multiverse theory. Um, uh, as I've said, who, who do you think is getting in that fucking rocket? It's going to be the people who are controlling the world, and on the most part, they're psychopath, what, psychopaths and fucking narcissists and assholes. So, you know, most genuine, good-hearted, altruistic, caring people—they're not going to be in that next episode. But also, in the environmentalism context, what we have now because of. Um, consumerism is a lot of pollution of the environment. We are doing so much damage and there's not a lot of protected areas and the protected areas they want to drill for oil in those areas and we, you know, it's the, the damage is done and we, we have no other choice but to do what we've done to the planet and in a hundred years time all these buildings and all these houses they have to be reconstructed they, they're all obsolete all these skyscrapers and all this. I think one of the most astounding, in terms of the environment, one of the most astounding facts at the moment is the is the, the way the uh, insect numbers around the planet are being depleted. You know, in some parts of the planet, it's 25 to 30 percent of the insects have died off. Right. Um, and it's, and it's, the, 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 the dying off is continuing at a at a fast rate, and that is bloody scary because you know these insects are needed to, to break down. Uh, biodegradable matter. Obviously, we're going to be living in literally piles of shit in the future if these people, if these insects die off. Also, they're needed for pollination, so that's what that's what helps all our food grow. You know, um, so if they die out, I tell you, we won't last long. But anyway, we live in hope. Trump goes. Well, am I? <laughs> can Can we keep going and uh, talk about um, the next topic? That is. Um, I wanted to shout out Antinatalist Society on Instagram, and if you are a writer, I know there's a lot of Twitter writers, and I know there's a lot of Instagram accounts about antinatalism, I do want you guys to make videos on YouTube, because you not only write well, you, you have 
the, this kind of support for each other in the community will also spread the message because people will will get exposure to this. There's there's not exposure to well, there's we don't talk about this topic of we we are now uh, recently about well the harm of coming into existence or that it's better not to yeah. procreate. But yeah, I think that Anton Ellis Society, if, if anyone knows him, I've I've messaged him and I said he should create Go on Instagram and follow Anthony Ellis Society. He needs more followers. He only has like 250 followers, even though he's a great writer. Yeah, so get on YouTube. Get on YouTube. Create content. And, um... Can I just say, like, if people, um, these great writers, if they're not willing or have anxiety about starting a YouTube channel, um, perhaps they can give a shout out to uh, yourself, myself, or, or some of the other people who have YouTube channels. We'd be, I'm sure we'd all be happy to read out their work if, on, a, on a YouTube audio clip if they wanted. Yeah, I would, I would do that. I would read out their work because it's so important. It, it's been valuable to me as an anti-natalist to see that, oh my God, there's people out there that have exactly the same mentality as me, like, towards this topic. And they have the same sentiment and it, and it's so important that people that are feeling this way know that oh this word antinatalism exists like I see on Twitter these people are like oh I didn't know there was a word for how I feel that's exactly how I felt when I first discovered about antinatalism like the actual philosophy because I had these views I was friends with uh, natalists my family were natalists everyone I knew were natalists more or less um, uh, well, I didn't even know to really use the word natalist, to be honest with you. Everyone I knew were just humans, and that's the way I viewed humanity, but I didn't know there was a whole load of us who have these views, and thank you to everyone who puts themselves out there and talks about it you know, on the internet, and equally thank you to people who talk about it day to day to people, because that has to be done as well. Yeah, um, can, can you continue talking? I want to I wanna get a cup of tea, I'm sorry. Ah, hurry up. Hurry okay. Up. Um, yeah, um, I think it's very important that, that we all connect, okay? So if you're watching this video, uh, please subscribe to my channel, Flyora's channel, and please just click through um, all the people commenting on our, on our videos and subscribe to their channels. Uh, follow us on Twitter. Um, Flyora's uh, Twitter account username is at Flyora. Mine is at Antinatalist, though. We will provide links to our social media accounts at the bottom of this uh, clip as well, so please uh, follow us there. And, you know, watch uh, some of the great uh, Antinatalists out there, um, such as um, Antinatalist Egan in Mendham. Um, Forever Wolf Films, Friendly Antinatalist. There's loads of them out there. What we we'll try and do is we'll provide a few links to uh, a load of uh, Antinatalist YouTube accounts under this uh, audio clip as well. Just There's a lot of people out there. Join the club, join us, and become um, one of the, the vocal elements amongst our movement. And I wanted to say that people like uh, uh, Charfrey Diane... Um, so she created embroidery, like an antinatalism embroidery. So you can get creative with antinatalism. And she she like sometimes writes on her bag, like a tote, like her tote bag, to n not uh, to spay your your animals and humans. And so I'm not saying do what she does, but I think you can get creative with it and not only create content but also. Um, let people know the younger generation needs to know that just because society is pressuring you or you see all these images of people with families and children and you, you, a lot of people think that that's what they're supposed to do they don't know that they don't have to have children yeah. so i'll be right back yeah. i'm getting my tea life, life, life sucks is another great channel Linos, and I think is it, what's that one is it super vegan dance or something what's that the guy with the beard he's really good as well I will, I'll, I'll remember it and we'll put the link at the bottom of this. But 
fly. Um, did you want to have a chat about reincarnation? Or we've already done that, really, haven't we? We spoke about coming back. Well, this idea that you just because you're happy and you're affluent and you're rich and you prov you can provide for your child that they will be able to <clears throat> cuz in a share house this one guy i live with he said oh i had this great childhood and i had a, a rich i had this big house with my parents and i had all this fun and he taught me all the negative stuff as well like he burnt down the church or something like all this crazy stuff cuz his his dad was a pastor and he and he used to steal money from the from the um, donations and stuff like he told me all the positive and negative and he you know what he is right now he's half deaf he's an alcoholic and he's got mental health issues so you you might think that you can provide for your child and that you can give them a good life but your child's gonna be an adult who can't even pay the rent you know so you, you not only do you have to financially support them like his family was financially supporting him and in the his eight he's over 36 years old his family was financially okay. supporting him, and yeah, uh, the problem. The problem sorry, go ahead, fly. I'm in again. So yeah, just because you're rich and affluent, and you think that oh, I'm gonna have a child and they're gonna be happy and travel the world and party every day and have fun, you. Uh, the fact of the matter is, you, your child might just turn out to be a complete fuck up. He, he, he all he does is wake up and drink alcohol all day in the morning and smoke cigarettes and watch porn. And that's that's what he's doing, you know. And and you have to financially support them as an adult. Yeah, but I, I'm just saying that it's it's not like it's not like you're passing on your success in life. You've just brought to mind uh, a video I watched, I watched during the week, uh, one of these Jordan B. Peterson interviews, and uh, he was talking about IQ levels and how basically 10% um, 10 to 16% of human beings have an IQ under 84 or under 80 uh, IQ points, and basically um, he, he saw that as a huge problem, and he didn't really offer a solution, but you know, basically, he was talking about how the U.S. Army doesn't hire or, or, or employ anybody with an IQ under 80 because they, they believe that they're incapable of, of learning a task or doing a task uh, because they've got such intellectual uh, disability. Um, but, you know, that's a hell of a lot of people. Um, uh, I think it was over 30 million of, of the U.S. have an IQ under 84. Um, and they, they spoke about this, and they were quite glib about it. You know, they, they talked about it as a problem for humanity, but they didn't imagine being one of those poor sods who walks around not being able to understand what the fuck is going on here, being at the mercy of other human beings. Um, you know, they spoke about it as an inconvenience in terms of uh, welfare, in terms of looking after these people, but you know, the fact is these people exist. Um, and also, there's a rare few geniuses in, 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 our, in, our, in our in our species who have IQs you know, 160 or above. They're fucking freaks of nature, man. And those geniuses would view anybody else as a fucking dumb fuck, okay? Because they're on a different fucking plane, okay? Uh, so, you know, most of us are dumb fucks compared to these geniuses. And these geniuses are freaks of fucking nature. And then the problem is these geniuses, these people with very high IQs, are the ones right with the books steering um, steering um, humanity with their you know lectures and talks and you know the fact is they're looking at it from their perspective when the fact is they're freaks of nature so they're looking at it from the fact that they understand what the fuck is going on and they they, 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 but they can't understand what it's like to be one of the rest of us <laughs> so yeah um, it's, it's a perverse state of affairs that we're being led by these people who enjoy life to some degree or have a great understanding and, and enjoy being you know, healthy, happy and very, very intelligent. But the fact is, they're the very fucking rare freak of nature. So it, it, it's a first thing. But everybody just nods and agrees and you know, cheers about this and thinks they're great without understanding that they as individuals are fucked. Sorry, that little rant there. I hope it made sense.
Right, and um, we're, we're, in a, we're, we're trying to buy happiness in our society and these, and these people that are successful and, and geniuses, you don't know what kind of childhood they had or what kind of, if they were even happy being pressured to succeed so much and maybe they're not actually happy they think they're happy but they 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 still have a nagging sort of feeling of unhappiness that that you know they're not, they're, they all they all still die they all still suffer from mental illnesses they all get can they all still uh, get cancer or heart attacks or some fucking stroke I, I saw this um, I, they, I see these people with stroke they, they i see stroke. them the, the half stroke. their body half their body is paralyzed because they had a stroke Sorry, you saw somebody who had uh, a stroke? No, I see several. I see several people that have had a stroke and half their body is paralyzed. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I see it all the time. But once again, unfortunately, these negative things, people in society are like, well, people can overcome any fucking crap, you know. And it, brush, it, brush, either brush under the carpet or give some bullshit platitude. Saying, "Oh well, that's we're all in it together," um, or fucking just ignore it, you know, or, or say, "Well, you can get there. You can get." There. You can be happy, like when I go to when I go to my therapist and I'm talking to the receptionist and I see all these disabled people and all these old people, like they can barely walk and move and and all this sort of stuff. But she's like, "Oh, these people are happy." And I'm like, yeah, but they're fucking stealing resources from the future. It's time for them to, to check out. They're fucking, they got fucking all these health problems. They're in wheelchairs. They can barely move. And I'm not like, de I'm not devaluing their life or their happiness. But it's sort of like, it's sort of, it sort of feels like there's something fundamentally wrong if, if you're happy in, in a, in this paralyzed state. Well, no, I, I would actually, to be honest with you, I think we need to do studies into these people. And, and, and like, I, I have nothing against anybody living. Like, if, like, live as long as you like. And if you're happy, you're happy. And if you're trying to be happy, good luck to you. You know, but my, my, my gripe is not with anybody who's uh, in, in, alive, my, uh, as in, like, trying to get over their sadness. Because I think that's a fundamental thing you've got to do in this world. You've got to try and be happy. Okay, so but should we be prolonging, we're prolonging our lives, our life expectancy, but hang on, our life expectancy is growing a lot, and these baby boomers, and these people that came before us, they lived in affluence, they had good job opportunities, they had everything for them, going for them, and what, what kind of world are they leaving behind for future generations, and not only are they aging longer, they're longer and longer, it's not like we're dying at the age of 80 anymore, people are living up to 90, 100, they're kids Kids are dying from all sorts of diseases and suicide and loneliness and unemployment and the world they've left behind with debt and, and economic problems, they don't give a shit about future generations and here they are dying with morphine, getting all these painkillers. How the hell are they going to guarantee this shit for future generations that we're, we're even going to live long happy lives like they're just sitting in nursing homes with dementia, with Alzheimer's, fucking... All these resources going towards these people that don't even, they're, they're, what are they doing? They're fucking zombies. And uh, what, what kind of world are we leaving behind for future generations? They don't give a shit. All they care about is, well, we're fucking happy. Our kids love us. Our family cares about us. But what about these people in the future? What, what kind of world are they going to get? Okay, yeah. Um, good run there, Fly. That's a good one. Uh, it's no, just unfair. Fine. It's just unfair that there's there's millionaires, that, and this is what pisses me off is that there's people with food on the table, and they don't even give a shit that there's thousands of people that can't even afford food, heating, ho they're homeless, they're, they're giving blowjobs for four dollars. They don't even give a shit that 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 could not only be their child, but that it's happening to people right now. And this is the pro-life people that they're not even going to take care of these foster children. They're not even going to clothe them or give them housing or or support them. And yet they they are going for pro-life. Is that these people? These people say, well, you know, my success is built on my fucking 
hard work and, and, and you know effort but they don't see that you know they've been taught by teachers who went to school every day they've been driving on roads where men fucking did all the hard manual labor to fucking make smooth surfaces for them to get to work with and school with ease they don't see the the nurses who help them the midwives who help them be born they don't they don't see the effort by people who perhaps aren't as financially or educationally successful you know what? I lived with the old person, um, Joe. I lived with the old, I lived with the old person, and you know the kind of world they lived in. They lived in a world where you could buy a house, and your job was handing out paychecks. And with that job, they were able to buy a house and support two people and a whole family. And now our generation, we we can't even hold one job that's going to support us. This is the kind of world we live in right now. And they're telling us to procreate. Who knows what the future is going to be like. And these are the same people that are psychopaths. And they have easy lives. They lived at home until they were 30. They had all their family and friends. They didn't live in an isolated world. Where well, we're not even talking to each other anymore. We're all on our phones. And they, they, they have a bad view of us. When they had an easy life. And they say well we worked hard for it. But guess what. You know what's happening right now. Machines are doing all the jobs right now. And there's a there's there's not a, the population has grown the population has grown and there's un, there's not enough jobs for everyone maybe not sorry um, yeah um, I suppose one thing we haven't approached or one thing we haven't talked about fly is genetically engineered babies because that's going to be obviously it's a talking point now but as we go further into the future people are going to say but you know you think life's shit, I'm going to make my baby fucking perfect in every way. And it's never going to have any of these diseases or problems. I'm going to make a genetically engineered perfect baby. What do you think of that? I think that's bullshit like NASA is bullshit. They, they well, just, they're just trying to, they're just trying to get funding, they're just trying to get funding and have food on the table. It's, it has nothing to do with reality. Okay. You've shouted that one down anyway. I think uh, these people still suffer from uh, psychological damage. They're still, they'll still live in a world of pain and suffering. Uh, well, the environment still will, will be fucked. And maybe they'll, because they'll be clones of their parents, and the people who can afford this shit will be all the rich uh, narcissists and psychopaths, and these people will probably be fucking horrific. Um, also, um, we have to wrap this up. We've got, we've got about 10 minutes to wrap this up. Oh, okay. Yeah, okay. Go ahead, go ahead. You, you've, uh, you cut me off mid-flow there. I forgot what I was saying, but it probably wasn't very important. But <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm sip of this almond milk and you can talk. I try to let you talk. I want you to talk, you know, but... um. So, yeah. Genetically engineered baby. That's what we were talking about, but... I can't really remember what else I was going to say. Just that it's going to be a huge fucking... Oh, yeah. Well, it's obvious, isn't it? Like, at the moment, the disparity between the rich and poor is fucking scary, isn't it? Like, 1% of the people in the world own something like 99% of the fucking assets and the money. Um, it, it, wouldn't, it wouldn't be a problem if they actually paid taxes. It wouldn't be a problem. So what's going to happen? What's going to fucking happen here? We're going to have uh, basically two, spe two subspecies of homo sapiens. You're going to have... These genetic, genetically engineered super babies, uh, and the rest of us who are just going to be uh, these unnecessary blobs. That's what. That's the way they're going to view us. Well, that's they're the people that, that make the, the people that make the the, the the people that make these people just, rich. The people that make these people right. rich are the poor people and the workers. Okay, and I not only that. Let, let me finish what I'm saying. Let let me finish what I'm saying because I'm I don't remember what I'm going to say. So the fact of the matter is, it's not about the rich and the poor, okay? It's not about, well, the rich are fucking great, alright? The fact of the matter is that they're not paying taxes on what they... If they buy a boat, they're not, they're not paying taxes. If they have billions of trillions of dollars, they're not paying taxes. It wouldn't be a problem if they actually paid taxes. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to make us, the 99%, pay taxes when we don't even have money none of us okay and the money we have we actually need for like healthcare and we need it for food and rent 
okay? But these rich people that own several houses and boats and 15,000 Porsches and cars, they're the ones who have to pay taxes on their Porsches, which they're not doing, okay? So, it, it, and, and, and this disparity and inequality... Jesus said, uh, blessed are the meek, for they, will, they shall inherit the earth. I think it's going to be the other way fucking around, unfortunately. It's going to be the fucking psychopaths that inherit this earth, because they're the ones in charge... They're the ones that are going to fucking get to the future. But, you know, fly, the other way of looking at it is, who'd want to be in a fucking future uh, that is overrun by a psychopath? They do enough damage as it is. Who wants to be in a world of glimpses of well, psychopaths? Not me. Well, it's the psychopaths that are having children, all right? Psychopaths and the dumb. Let's, let's not forget the dumb. I don't understand why these uneducated... Also, let's, let's, let's not forget, it's not just dumb people, it's emotionally traumatised people are having children as well because they're having such shit and, and miserable lives and they're suffering so much and they can't believe the negativity of this world. They've been, they've been fed this hopium bullshit by all the self-help books and gurus and you know, they somehow buy into the viewpoint that things are going to get better. But that, that, that's who's having children. I think not, the poor are having children because they have a bad living situation, alright? Like, if you consider the underdeveloped countries and and the disadvantaged women, and the, and uh, when they say educate women, it's... they Women have to fucking be educated, not fucking just educate women and they still go and get in domestic violence and fucking have children in it. There's women out there that... Because they want an income for life, trap a guy and get a baby, and we got to stop this system of we, we're supporting. Okay, we we have to support our children, okay, but we got to figure out a system to discourage these um, disadvantaged people from having children. Discourage everyone, fly. Discourage everyone. That's my view. Fly, um, just if we may go back to promoting antinatalism, I think it's important that people uh, in real life out there, you know, talk to people, but also uh, hand out leaflets. You know, you see Jehovah Witnesses and Scientologists handing out shit. I think it's about time that uh, antinatalists um, got out there and, and left leaflets around their locality for people to read. Because not everybody fucking, uh, not everybody's YouTube algorithms will bring them to um, antinatalist uh, information. So it's important that, you know, in real life we make leaflets, uh, pamphlets. And, and, and what would you, what would you, what would be contained in the leaflet? If you could have a leaflet and put it, let's say, um, in a in a healthcare provider. Like I, I go to this healthcare provider for my therapy and there's tons of leaflets, you know, you get reminded of all these fucking diseases that you could possibly get. So what kind of leaflet would you create and what would what would be contained in that leaflet? Well, I just talk about how maybe end suffering forever really. I just list all as many problems as I could with life that are incurable. Um, and talk about ending like is it, that's a very deep question, but you know, I think that anybody I'm not telling people what to do in terms of what to write, I think write what the hell you want. It's, it's up to you and your personal opinions. I'm not gonna dictate to people what they fucking should in these um, leaflets, but I just think it's important that we do that. I will probably just basically surmise and paraphrase what I've said in my YouTube videos and on Twitter, really. That's what I'll do. I'll just kind of try to distill um, what I've said to uh, as, as effective amount of words as, as, as possible. Uh, also, uh, maybe uh, music, art, you know, more paintings, please, more drawings, more comedy. There are some comedians out there who do antinatalism. Please, if you're a comedian, crack a few jokes, make people laugh. That's an effective way to get people into antinatalism. Also, graffiti. You know, there's some wonderful street art around the world. Maybe it's about time there's some antinatalist street art, you know, that's really in people's faces as they go to work, as they commute, as they... That's a great the idea. I love that idea. I love the so, graffiti idea. Yeah, graffiti. So, you know, there's this channel called Life Sucks. There's this channel called Life Sucks, and he creates like these graphic, um, graphic art. Yeah. 
That's awesome as well. And he, he has he has different viewers from all sorts of places and he's drawing people into this into antinatalism well, through his some, artwork. Some of this stuff went out there. Posters, leaflets, pamphlets, graffiti, art, comedy, writing, novellas, YouTube videos, fucking podcasts. Get the stuff out there, folks. You're saving lives. You're literally saving lives. By doing this, you are stopping people from being born, which is basically a death sentence. That's what it is. So you're saving lives. Think about how many lives you're going to save. Okay, Fly, anything else? That's it for today. Um, I'm going to upload this on 4G, and um, I will leave links below. Um, I'll first have to upload it and then leave links, okay? All right, nice one. All right, mate. Have a good day. Sorry about uh, getting all... Um, Ranty and angry. You, you listen, we can't help it. It's an emotive subject. Don't feel ashamed of being human and, and talking passionately about something you care about. Um, I'm really happy to have you to have this conversation with. I'm really happy that we can talk about this. And I realize that you are much darker than I am. Oh, <laughs> really? Yeah, I never thought I'd meet someone that that is so uh, bleak about reality oh i'm sorry about that if that's upsetting to you but um no it's not i'm not upset it's the tr like you said it's the truth you know that that is that is a potential and it that can happen and it does happen okay well you know maybe you can be the little light and offer some positivity about antinatalism and i'll do the rest <laughs> <laughs> we can try all different ways we can try all sorts of ways. It's fine. Okay, thank you very much. I'm going to stop this recording, and I'm really glad to have to have you to talk talk to about this about. Thank you. Bye. All right. Likewise. Thank you. Bye. Bye.